nervous for this one. I'm not usually nervous for videos, right? <sighs> Here we go. We have done it. 100,000 subscribers. I mean... <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Now, this is not scripted. I mean... Yeah, this is just off the top of my head. I mean, first of all, a massive, massive thank you. This is just... This is just mad. These are the sort of goals on YouTube where you watch other YouTubers get to six-figure subscribers and you think, wow, I mean, that is just, that's impossible. I mean, I could never do that. That's unbelievable. And to be here right now, thanks to every single last one of you for watching, subscribing, liking, interacting in any way, obviously uh, hitting me up on social media and asking me questions and giving, giving me critiques as well on how to improve in my videos. Um, I mean, it's just crazy to be where I am today. A hundred thousand subscribers. I've had so many crazy experiences both uh, within YouTube and outside of YouTube because of you guys and the uh, and the support that I've managed to garner due to this channel. So just to, again, just to say thank you, it seems like not enough, but the best way I can say thank you is just to keep posting better and better content to improve all the time. And I, I suppose another kind of big thank you to all of you guys, not just for watching my videos and sharing my videos, but also uh, critiquing my videos. You know, I've made obviously mistakes over the past in the channel and I've tried to rectify them. I've tried to kind of improve as a person and improve my content all because I want to provide the best videos and, uh, yeah, clearly you guys have come along uh, come along for the ride with me and I am so thankful So it's again really hard to put into words But again, hopefully this video is gonna be a little bit of fun It's gonna be something completely different But there is a reason why I've decided to do like a little go-karting special as just some content, you know So it's not just me uh, talking to the camera because I did want to provide something a little bit more But I'll talk at the end of the video why I've decided to do a go-karting video in particular There is a special reason for that in terms of this channel. There is still so much much I want to do in 2021 and into the future. I don't know where I'm going to be six months, a year, two years from now. I'm just enjoying the journey and trying to work as hard as I can to provide the best content possible because at the end of the day, it's down to you guys why I'm here exactly where I am. That is the big goal to just keep on enjoying it, keep on creating even better videos, definitely collaborate and do stuff outside of uh, YouTube as well. So once again, a massive thank you to every single last one of you uh, for joining me on on this journey. This is not the end game as I've been saying. This is just the beginning for so much more exciting things to come in the future and I can't wait to just carry on and continue on this journey with you guys as well. So once again, thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. So here we are jumping into my 100k special, a really fun day of karting at Right House. And again, this is the extra bit of content that I wanted to give you guys because yeah, this was just so much fun. So Right House, by the way, if, uh, for you guys that don't know, is one of the oldest tracks in the UK. Uh, Lewis Hamilton's race there, the likes of other world champions as well. It's a really famous kart track. So yeah, it was so much fun. Amazing day out. Now, in terms of what we actually did, uh, I was actually there with a couple of friends, uh, me and a friend of mine called JB, who also has a YouTube channel and his uh, and his friend Ed as well. It was a one hour session with 15 minutes of it being the practice slash quali and then 45 minutes for the race. We actually get to do a proper like uh, grid start. So beginning right off, uh, everyone's obviously just finding their feet and just watch this, by the way, right at the beginning, we, a five man overtake, almost get put on the grass. One, two, three, four, and then dive it down the inside of, uh, of that guy as well. I mean, yeah, <laughs> not a bad way to start overtaking five people in one corner. Now, the really cool thing about having friends there, and especially JB, by the way, who is another, who's also a content creator and has a YouTube channel, is that we actually had multiple people uh, with cameras, which is always amazing. And uh, so here you have uh, JB's camera angle just above and me just below chasing uh, uh, chasing him down. And yeah, it's just so cool to have the kind of this little uh, uh, double vision and uh, double perspective uh, of the track. And especially later on in the race where we get to do some uh, really close racing. So... Again, this first uh, 15 minutes is just purely a practice slash qualifying. Get used to the track and just try and set a quick enough uh, lap as possible. And uh, to be honest, what you're actually looking for is not really to be racing people, but to just get some clean air. We all know in Formula 1 that all of the drivers, all they want in uh, qualifying is clean air. Although, to be fair, sometimes they do want to slipstream. So, yeah, there was a bit of an argy-bargy there with JB, but he uh, kind of goes down the inside and you're just trying to overtake the slower people and looking for some clean air to start a good lap. So, again, really good to have 
have kind of this uh, split screen and the really good um, and the sorry the really good reason why uh, it is good to have JB there is because unfortunately and this was so frustrating here we are riding on board with me and this is my camera angle but unfortunately my camera died about 10 minutes into the race which was so depressing I was just like I can't believe it when the race ended and there was only obviously the entire session was over an hour long like in terms of how long it lasted but when there was only about 36 minutes of footage I was fuming so again we're just working our way through the back markers trying to get a bit of free space and just trying to enjoy it as well so we love racing so much and uh, yeah me and JB we are very competitive so once again I'm chasing him down here I'm still really not thinking uh, in terms of I just want to set a good time at this point I'm just still buzzing to be even on the track so yeah, and it got a little bit close here as well. I kind of got taught a little bit of a lesson. Uh, JB and this guy uh, start racing. They go side by side. I think I'm going to go down the inside and I make the wrong decision and spin out. So yeah, at this point, I kind of had to think to myself, right, just get your mind straight and go for a fast lap. Stop messing about trying to race people because yeah, that definitely did not work. Uh, and here, by the way, just check this out, by the way, going right around the inside, uh, just trying to just catching a few people uh, napping so yeah we're, we're really focusing at this point on just setting a good lap because I want to start on pole position I want to be that guy in number one but also of course you have to just get as much clean air as possible so uh, looking out for number what's that number 13 seeing where he's going to go uh, just trying to find a little bit of space here and it's kind of difficult to be honest because every single lap you're catching people and uh, if so, especially if you have a lot of pace it's a little bit annoying because you're constantly as uh, he goes wide you're constantly trying to find clean air and I kind of just shove him off into the road because I want a clean lap you're constantly trying to find clean air, but you're constantly catching people up. And yeah, that was not great. Yeah, exactly. Banging the steering wheel there. That was not a great exit. But to be honest, I wanted to show this lap in particular because I'm not sure what my qu what my quickest lap was in terms of qualifying, but this was actually a pretty decent lap. So I'm going to commentate over it. And going into turns one and turn two, you're always trying to just uh, nail the apexes and get as close to the tires as possible. Here we go. In, uh, here we are going into the uh, left hand here. I'm, I prefer to stay really tight. Some people like to go out a little bit wider and carry a bit more speed. And this is a very tricky one. You've got to stay off those curbs. It was a little bit too much slide there so not too happy but trying to get, just carry as much speed as possible and going as wide as possible here you have to be very heavy on those left hand curbs brake and then try to just carry that speed and minimize the slide so yeah the lap is going well so far once again very heavy on this left hand curb and it's very physical by the way and just a really nice last corner as well just dab a brakes and then accelerate as early as possible and even getting a little bit of slipstream so to be honest that lap and you can see me just kind of like willing myself ahead uh, that lap felt very good and right around the outside there as well what a move I mean uh if I say so myself, it was pretty decent. So yeah, that lap felt decent. And uh, that was the end of the uh, practice slash qualifying. Here I am just going onto, uh, onto the uh, straight. And as you can see on the board, um, uh, just there, you can see the checkered flag. That is it. The practice slash quali is over. And this is where we go back into the pits and are actually told in terms of where we qualified. So I felt the session uh, in terms of the practice and quali went pretty well. And here we are. Let's see what the steward says. Number one, that is beautiful, baby. Pole position, that is what we like to see. And also beating my friend JB. He is always quicker than me, but finally I get pole position. And this was really great as well, just uh, working my uh, way up into the grid. This is where we line up for the race and pole position. Where is number one? That is all I'm looking for. I am buzzing at this point. Uh, that's our friend uh, Ed just on the right. And yes, going to the front of the grid, it's a good feeling, guys. Do you know what? I don't, I don't, I do not blame Lewis Hamilton for having over 100 pole positions. It is a good feeling. And there it is, number one, exactly where we belong. I tried to get it as close as possible. If anything, stop a little bit, uh, a little bit short. So maybe could have took a few more inches there. And uh, yeah, this is where me and my friend are just talking, a bit of trash talking. So, and also actually, listen out. I'm going to let you kind of listen to what we say here. But yeah, listen to what uh, I tell my, uh, my friend uh, just before the start of the race. So yes, do not take each other out. That was, yeah, to be honest, I trust uh, racing with JB. He's a really uh, great racer. He's done a uh, motocross in the, part, in the past, but here we go. The stewards, they're saying visor down and the lights are coming on pole position. And there are the red lights. Where are they? There they are. There's the red lights. And we're just waiting for the greens. And that's it. The race is go. Now I kind of, I get a bit, I get a bit bogged down here. So JB gets, uh, get, gets quite close to me, but I'm on the inside. So that's all I'm trying to protect. Just protecting that inside line, making sure I don't make any mistakes and don't get 
punted off and that was a pretty clean getaway not the fastest getaway but at this point i'm also just checking over my shoulder yep just to make sure no one is diving it down the inside because yeah people on lap one can be pretty pretty crazy once again checking my shoulder just making sure no one also got a good start and that is it happily a clean getaway and that is all you want by the way from pole position is just a clean getaway and happily uh, not too many people over my shoulder so i am pretty happy with that race finish and just finishing off the first lap of the race yeah not too bad pole position clean getaway i mean what could possibly go wrong so yeah a brilliant brilliant start and i am just buzzing at this point i'm absolutely on top of the world but now let's take a look at jb and his start as well because he did not have as good of a start once again the uh, marshals tell us uh visors down and to keep an eye on the lights now you won't be able to see the red light actually on jb's uh, perspective but here we go green is coming up very very soon and there it is. We are off. And you can see he actually gets a bit of a jump on me. He gets a bit of a better start. So that's definitely something I need to work on in terms of uh, my timing. But because he's on that outside, he gets just kind of blocked away by one and two. And even a third person just there. So he loses three positions. But sadly, uh, well, happily, he does manage to make it in front of that guy. But now he's got a bit of work to do because, and you can see me in pole position, of course, uh, get, have a bit of a gap to second place. So I'm buzzing at this point. But yeah, JB is not very happy. He is a uh, lot the uh, second position so he's got to kind of climb back through the field a little bit and um yeah, to be honest, although I did mention earlier that my camera kind of dies uh, at one point, we do get to see a little bit more on onboard footage of me uh, in a minute. But although my camera did die sadly uh, quite uh, soon during the race, it is good to have JB's perspective because him being behind me for most of the race, uh, it's kind of good to kind of see the gaps and everything. But again, he has got work to do. He is in the in fourth place, and if anything, you can see I'm starting to open the gap to second place as well. So he's losing touch with me just a little bit. This is costing him valuable tents, and clearly he is quicker than the cart in front because he's all over the back of uh, number two here look oh my god a little bit of contact there as well so yeah getting very rg bargy those two uh you can see the guy in second place going uh, a little bit wider now these two are side by side and jb is just hoping for maybe a crash or something to take advantage of so again all he can do is sit here and this is kind of a depressing uh, as someone if you know especially that you're quicker than the two guys in front especially it's really annoying to be sat back and just not doing anything just trying to get a good run on the final corner here and once again now the big problem actually for jb is that he is a pretty big individual he's like over six foot and he weighs quite a bit he's quite muscly and that is not good in go-karts for anyone that knows me i'm pretty short i'm pretty light which is quite good uh but again uh, what, the guy in third place just goes a little bit wide and JB does manage to get through but the problem for JB is that he doesn't have as good and you'll see this throughout the video especially compared to me when we go quite close uh, a little bit later on in the race JB does have a bit of a deficit down the straight you can just see he doesn't have that top end so he has to get the moves done into the corners it's very difficult to kind of overtake someone on the straights for him so again you can see now losing touch to me I'm there on pole position P1 love in life just get just building that gap at the moment uh, JB tries to kind of get a bit of a good little last corner but doesn't quite uh, manage to actually bumps into the guy in front so says sorry to him because he actually had a bit of a poor exit so yeah I'm sure a little bit of frustration there under the visor but just good news for me and again so at this point of the race, I mean, you're just trying to kind of get into the groove, get into the zone, uh, get a bit of consistency. JB just trying to get past. Can he make it down the inside? Yes, he does. Aggressive move, but he does it. Also covering the inside, making sure that the other driver doesn't just kind of barrel straight into you straight after the overtake. And that is it. JB has worked his way. Uh, he's putting his helmet down, almost like a little human DRS, little drag reduction system right there. And now he has got work to do to catch up to me. And here we go. This is sadly going to be uh, all the footage that I've got left from me before the camera does die out but don't worry at this point I do realize that JB is now in second place. I do realize that he's hunting me down. You can see, I actually look back and I look back to see where he is because I know now that he is in second place. So I've got to kind of really just put the pedal to the metal, diving down the inside, really aggressive. Uh, the per Clearly that back marker uh, is racing and I'm fuming there, by the way. That was a terrible exit. I'm just, I'm, I'm so angry. And I, I'm always like this in the car, by the way. Whenever I don't hit an apex or whenever I don't have a good, uh, a good exit, I'm always just like banging the steering wheel, super, super animated. But yeah, that's just how I am really. Again, checking my shoulder uh, to kind of see where JB is. And you can also see with, I'm doing something with my hands then, kind of just relaxing them on the straight because during a 45 minute endurance race, especially for me, because this was the longest I ever kind of carted in my life. I've, I've only ever done kind of like 20 minute sessions in team sport. And then you obviously take a break to do a 45 minute session and also a 15 minute practice quality like that definitely takes something out of you. So yeah, just trying to get into the zone, get into the groove. And uh, here you can see me start kind of uh, working my way through the back markers. Now, the really important thing to know and I kind of scare that guy off the road so uh yeah not too bad there 
The really kind of important thing to note is that in these races, there is no blue flags. Sebastian Vettel would be absolutely fuming at this, but yeah, there is no blue flags. So everyone is battling. It doesn't matter if you're in P1 or P10 or P20, everyone is battling as hard as possible. And you really do need to kind of have your wits about you because all the time you're in P1, I'm in the lead of the race and I'm just trying to kind of think, do not get crashed off, do not get involved in some kind of ridiculous incidents. But sadly, this is the last footage you'll see of me. The camera cuts out just there. So for the rest of the race, Race, we're going to be riding on board my friend JB and you can see me just there into the distance we both have the same kind of helmets and almost the same race suits so you can always kind of tell uh, who's who so I'm always the guy in the white helmet so you can kind of see I've got a bit of a maybe like a three second gap but certainly JB is working hard to try and catch up uh, because of course he wants to be winning this race but we all know there's no way he's going to catch me there's no way he's winning this race I am going to be taking that W there is no doubt about it but I'm going to have to fight for it that's for sure so yeah, again, a little bit later off into the race and, um, you can see he is making progress. He's definitely catching up to me. I think the gap is now maybe a little bit two seconds and you can see me battling with the guy ahead. I go down the uh, outside, which then turns into the inside. So really nice overtake by me. Uh, JB gets a little bit caught up. There's a few little, there's a yellow flag there because someone's off. And uh, once they go past the incident, that's when JB then decides to go through. So obviously respecting yellow flags is a massive part of racing and you do have to kind of be uh, aware of it. There are some marshals on the track sometimes. So you've got to kind of always be focused and uh, it's not always easy to be focused or uh, during a 45 minute minute race and uh, I mean 45 minutes is not even that much to be honest for I'm sure a lot of uh, carters and a lot of endurance but this was the first time that either me or JB had done a race that was this long but once again you can see me off into the distance trying to overtake some back markers JB also has to do the same against uh, numbers that number 13 yeah number 13 is he going to go down the inside is he going to go is he going to be late on the brace yes he is he dives down the inside nice move no slide no nothing and leaving plenty on the table to have a good exit there as well now I'm getting caught up in these back markers you can see me here kind of get a little bit frustrated but I do manage to get down the inside of both of those two guys but I did lose a little bit of time so once again now JB is caught up to the two guys that I overtook on the previous lap can he go down the outside he's thinking about it but no can't quite do it there Again, now this is a nice little corner to go down the inside, especially if you've got the momentum and the confidence on the brakes. Is JB going to go for it? Yes, he does. Once again, a little bit of slide there. It might have been a bit of an aggressive move, but he manages to pull it off. I'm a, I'm a little bit annoyed, to be honest. I was hoping he was going to get uh, held back a little bit more. And then right behind, what is that, number third, number 14. Uh, again, just looking to try and get through. Where can I get through? I mean, these guys are back markers, just remember, so we have a lot more pace than them. But you don't want to get caught up in a needless incident. JB holds it around the outside, which then turns into the inside. Really nice move there to be able to kind of hold off the speed for that outside and now once again he is chasing down me so a little bit later on into the race you can kind of see that the sun has almost gone down so this might give you a bit of an indication of just how long JB tried to catch up to me but our pace was very similar it was kind of like one tenth quicker there one tenth slower there but yeah he has definitely made a lot of progress and once again you can see uh, he, he is definitely caught up to the back of me that is me just ahead of him trying to overtake these back markers I dive it down the inside uh, pretty easily have a bit of a bump with the guy in front I didn't expect him to break that early and then also go down the inside there and JB just follows me so well and look Look, he is right behind me, although he is side by side here with, uh, and this is what actually our, our, our other friend, Ed, who also has a camera, but yeah, JB manages to hold it and kind of give it, uh, go down the inside. So yeah, not too bad there. But at this point, I mean, he is right on the back of me. That lead I had at the beginning of the race of about five, uh, five seconds. And then look, he's right next to me. He's on the grass. I don't realize he's there. I almost put him into the barrier and just give him space right at the last second. So that definitely got a little bit hairy. I did not realize that he was kind of like off the track on my outside. So here we are wheel to wheel and uh, honestly guys the adrenaline is running because I know that he's quick I know that he's uh, caught up throughout the entire race and I've got to defend for my life I'm going inside outside I'm, I'm going uh, in a defensive line as well and here you can really see the straight line deficit because JB look I'm just kind of gapping him on the straights because he's a little bit heavier he's a little bit taller as well so yeah uh, being shorter and being lighter certainly does have its advantages on track and I am loving it but this battle honestly I love fighting with JB because he is such a great racer and honestly our pace sometimes is very very close but happily I managed to hold him off just there. You can see here moving on to the next clip a little bit further a little bit later on in the race happily I do manage to hold him off 
And uh, yeah, so I just a little bit, I think there's about 20 laps of the race left. And just watch me, by the way, I pull off a very aggressive move, go down the inside. That guy is not happy. He puts his hand up and that is number 10. The guy in number 10. Now keep him in mind because he's going to be a little bit important. He spins off, by the way, but just keep in mind number 10 and that aggressive move that I pulled off on him. I thought it was a pretty decent move to be fair, but I don't think he was too happy. JB does follow me through, which is exactly what you want to be doing. But yeah, just keep uh, number 10 in the back of your minds because uh, he comes into play in a little bit. So at this point, we're really kind of getting towards the end of the race, although we don't actually know what lap we're on. So I've got a little bit happily, I've got a bit of a gap at this point. So the pressure is not too much on my shoulders. I know that I'm quicker than these back markers. And it's just about trying to make sure that JB kind of gets held up by them. But once again, he just follows me through. He kind of cuts through the traffic really well, although he's getting stuck a little bit here behind number 17, who's not as quick. Uh, once again, uh, number 10 here, he's also a really aggressive, uh, and it's not, not quite here where the uh, incident happens, but number 10 goes super wide, JB does a beautiful little switch back, that is what you want, and uh, yeah, really nice pace down the, uh, really nice pace to uh, overtake him as well. Here we go, we're coming towards the end of the race, and JB really does need to start kind of getting a little bit closer if he wants to challenge for the win. I'm still at P1, by the way, I have led every single lap, and I have never lost the lead at this point, so I am buzzing, but I know that, especially towards this later end of of the race it's hard to describe but you are really kind of struggling mentally you are starting to feel it in your hands and in your legs and especially as JB does another decent move I hate to say it that was a nice move down the inside just breaking late and I am right there but at this point you're definitely feeling it especially because we've never done these endurance races uh, before so yeah the tiredness factor comes in that mental aspect of just trying to keep up your concentration you start missing apexes you start making little mistakes as um, once again I think that, that is number 10 actually as he makes some mistakes. Was it number 13, actually? Uh, number 13, I do apologize. So this is where he gets very close. I get a very bad exit. JB is right there. Look at me go. I'm so defensive. I'm almost on the grass. I'm not opening that inside line whatsoever. I do not want a single gap. JB thinks about going around the outside. It doesn't quite work out. There is number 10. And just, uh, just watch this, by the way, guys, because this is sadly where it all goes wrong. Number 10 steamrolls into someone, takes him off. JB tries to avoid the accident, but has a bit of a half spin, just trying to avoid the accident. So yeah, he is absolutely fuming. I do not blame him whatsoever and yeah just such a frustrating uh, incident to get uh, to get caught uh, into because of course now I have gapped him by I mean the gap is uh, massive between me and JB now so we don't get to actually fight for the race win all the way until the checkered flag and uh, yeah you can see uh JB is not happy. He's going to do some more head shaking here, and I do not blame him because we were literally just, uh, we were side by side. Yeah, look, the hands up, the head shaking, you know, why did that have to go that way? And let's take a look at a slow-mo because this was so depressing. I mean, we were going to fight for the race win, but number 10 comes out of nowhere, does overtake JB, which is uh, fair enough. But here, I mean, that guy was just way over aggressive, and especially here he was. Look how far behind he is, by the way, to the guy next to me, and that's the guy he takes out. I mean, he's so far behind. He's so late on the brakes and takes him out. JB is just just trying to avoid the accident, but ends up getting into a half spin. Now, if you're wondering, by the way, number 10 did get black flagged and he actually had to go into the pits, but sadly, that was frustrating. And so that brings about, sadly, the end of the race. JB wasn't able to catch me, but he did finish in second. This is now the final lap in the final corner and the checkered flag is out. And because he finished in second, ladies and gentlemen, you know exactly what that means. Your boy Aldas finished in P1. I won the race from pole position, led every single lap, never got overtaken. And what a, uh, what a day it was. Sorry once again that my camera died. I'm uh, hopefully going to be able to fix that next time out. But now the big reason why I decided to do karting content on my 100k uh, special video is because I am going to start bringing karting videos onto the channel. It's one of the different types of content that's a little bit different that I want to try and do on my channel. And uh, if you guys like it, if you guys uh, enjoy it, then definitely let me know. Uh, if you guys don't want to see it, then you, obviously don't worry because my regular content, my regular kind of opinions on Formula One, everything is going to stay the same. But I just want to, I just want to do more content like this and more karting on. On my channel, especially with JB. So yeah, this is going to be something, uh, hopefully that's going to be a regular occurrence on the channel. But now let's actually listen into uh, our kind of reaction to the race and our little breakdown, uh, literally as we get out of the carts. So that is it. That brings about the end to my 100 
1,000 subscriber special. Once again, thank you so much to every single last one of you for supporting me and getting me to this massive landmark. And uh, yeah, there is even bigger and better things on the horizon as well. So once again, a massive thank you. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, then don't forget to drop a like and smash that subscribe button. There is still plenty of milestones. The, the 200K is the next big one. So yeah, hopefully we get there soon. And once again, a massive thank you to every single last one of you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.